I'm very honored to have you, all of you here and in Canada too. And this is the first edition of International Game Camp, which is uh, an idea to uh, create a playground uh, projectation between uh, cultural heritage and uh, game development. So my uh, window this morning is to explain the idea and give you the tools the orientation tools for the for the camp. So, I will use the interactive uh, lecture that maybe some of you saw in uh, Politecnico or uh, in a classroom in the Institute of European Design. And uh, welcome everybody to International Game Camp. International Game Camp is uh, a project that is. Uh, um, produced by Stream Colors and Book Republic and is in collaboration with uh, three of the main uh, university in Italy. We have uh, Instituto Europeo of Design that is uh, the place where we are now. We have uh, George Brown College in Toronto that uh, is a very uh, pleasure and honor to have also 14 students here today and uh, also professors so and then we have uh, the Polytechnic of Milan that is joining the the party so let's start what is the mission of the of the camp the mission is not creating video games as fast as you can the mission is stimulate with new ideas new open a new conversation between game developers and uh, cultural heritage. So cultural institution and game developers seems to be uh, in a way uh, far between, but uh, as we will see in these days, there are many uh, points of contact between. So how can we uh, create a playground? Uh, this is what we uh, initially think about. We create uh, an idea, a call, that is uh, a call to Italian Museum because the International Game Camp is uh, creating video games powered by Italian culture. So uh, how we can inspire you in these uh, um, two days, we create the Pandora's Box. The Pandora's Box is a place on internet that is reachable by you and later I will show you how you will uh, um, take this um, content and uh, the call is very simple. We ask the museum to share their artworks or what they want, also photography for, uh, from the architecture of the museum. And uh, we put uh, uh, this call at the beginning, the aim of this call was to involve uh, five, ten museums because we know that it is a, a very strange um, arguments. So in, in Italy we are not used to share contents, but the um, good things is that now we have 55 museums and we have more than 600 uh, images that you will uh, use as inspiration for your uh, projectation. So um, you will have the access to Flickr where we organize all the contents uh, divided in uh, a very simple way that I will show you later. And, and so um, also we have the partnership, as I said, with, uh, in, um, with university. So we have uh, Institute Europeo of Design, George Brown College and Politecnico that are working together to make this uh, possible and they create like a um, shared knowledge platform. So the idea is that the camp is not uh, um, a challenge, so you are not against other team, but you are part of uh, an experimentation where the sharing knowledge is the base of our value. So we have also the um, uh, supporting from ASV, which is uh, the associ association about video games in uh, Italy. 
And this is very important because these give uh, uh, the right condition and the right context for game development. So we have all the ingredients to make this uh, uh, happen. Rip. Okay, so uh, the call was uh, engage professional researchers from game developers and cultural heritage uh, filtered by the university's uh, uh, projectation. And the call is, uh, and the effort that you have to do today in these days is to reinvent processes uh, to design new practice and share with all the, the people that are the participant of the events. Understanding if there are new ways of educational workshop or new practice that can be useful for uh, uh, digital projectation in museum but also in video games. It is a 48 hours live co-creation event, it's not continuous, so every day at midnight you are free to go and take a shower and be a normal person the next day. Um, all the uh, contents will be um, shared and uh, streamed by internet with Toronto. So in this moment they are sleeping probably, but when they will uh, get up, they will have this wonderful video of me talking in this way. <laughs> so let's start and talk about how you can orientate yourself in the camp. The camp has uh, its goals. So start from the first one. The first one is create your team. So when I uh, finish my presentation, you have to understand which are the companions of your journey. And later I will show you how we want to agevolate and uh, simplify the team building because it's a very important aspect for a good uh, result. What you have to do? You have to prototype an idea, so you don't have to prototype a video game at the end or a virtual installation or interactive installation, but you have to think about the idea and how you um, want to uh, express the inspiration that you have from the Pandora's box. The Pandora's box, as you see, is uh, divided in different categories. We have environment with uh, images of uh, environments taken from uh, uh, paints or illustration. We have the characters. So if you go in under the section characters, you will see paint from uh, um, people or uh, uh, a selection of people inside a paint. And we will have objects, props, and architectures that are in the same category. But to agevolate the, to facilitate the um, access to Pandora's box that I remember all of you is uh, um, full of content that are not uh, shareable outside the International Game Camp, you will, fi you will find uh, around the camp, around the Instituto Europeo of Design, you will find this um, uh, QR code. So with your mobile, you can just have access to the objects, environment, characters, and abstract art. Probably you can have access also in this presentation too. I have complete too late, I didn't test it. And uh, as we have the Pandora's box for images, we have also a library for music and sound effects. So as I will explain later, we are uh, prepared to receive your uh, inspiration with uh, a team based on different aspects. And for music, we uh, if you put your phone on this uh, QR code, you have access to a documentation where you have all the link to download uh, free music and uh, free sound effects for your projectation. Okay, so what is the final submission? The first day, so tomorrow morning, you have to complete a format, a, a document about your idea. In these documents, you have to express your idea, the format that you want to use, the genre of game that you want to develop, or the genre of installation that you want to develop. The, on a Sunday morning, 
so the next day you have to uh, give us, give to the organization a document that is an art bible. So starting from references uh, from the museum with all the credits in, uh, you just show how you um, evolve and create your custom art behind your projectation. And uh, in the afternoon, uh, before the closing of the events, you have to create a one minute uh, teaser that is not uh, um, taken from the video game experience, but can be used uh, also for cinematic, uh, bidimensional cinematic or uh, story telling that are not in 3D. So just to give the idea of your, of your project. Okay, so how we can in inspire you? We can inspire you by Pandora's box, as we said, but we want to inspire you also with uh, the capabilities of the incredible people that we have uh, in these uh, events. We call them mentors, and they are set in different desks. So we create a desk that is uh, uh, about game design. So inside this desk, you have professional from the game industry that every day work about game idea and the game concept. So then we have another desk that is about game art. So if you want a critical um, uh, review of your work, you can find lead artists, art directors uh, from Ubisoft and from uh, Toronto and from uh, Italian uh, game industry. Then we have the desk from Digital Cultural Heritage that is uh, um, the place where people that use technology inside the museum uh, can share their um, knowledge and their needs. So if you want to orientate your project for a museum, here you have all that you need to understand if it's a good product. Then we have the game sound desk with uh, uh, the um, possibilities to have uh, uh, many suggestions and many um, uh, confrontation about the game sound of your game or interactive installation. And then we have the game marketing that will help you to create the art bible and the final trailer. So you are in a way um, followed by us. So the desk are not a mandatory element, a mandatory subject, but is uh, something that and try to create a critical uh, point of view of your work. Then we want also to create some moments where people can understand a new pipeline, a new showcase of uh, techniques. So we have uh, uh, three um, guests. We have uh, Billy Majunis, a lead artist in Ubisoft. I don't know, Billy, if you are there, just <laughs> he has a small hand. <laughs> and Billy will talk about his experience as a um, lead artist in Far Cry 4. And will be very interesting to understand how they work and if we can steal some, uh, some interesting pipelines. Then we have Andrea Orioli, who is a concept artist for characters. He is uh, famous on Steam for uh, selling a character for Dota, which is a very famous uh, and common game. And then we will have uh, Gian Pietro Fabre, who are a visual effects artist, and uh, he will uh, show us uh, um, his background as a game developer and then move to uh, movie industry just to understand the difference between the medium of the video games and the medium of the, the, the movie, and understand if we can uh, uh, steal some practices or tools from these two worlds. And then we have the special uh, uh, guest. We are very proud to have uh, um, today from Rijks Museum which is one of the most innovative in the world and is one of the first um, <coughs> pioneer in uh, sharing contents to people because they are 
they have this uh, identity, digital identity, that is based on sharing contents in high resolution and leave the um, people to do what they want, also commercially. That's correct? Yeah. And uh, we are very proud also to have Rick Gash, who is a game designer, a very uh, a veteran from the game industry. Linda is there, uh, sorry, I, and Rick, ah, it's with Rossella, okay. So Rick Gash he is a veteran from uh, a video games industry, so for me it's important to understand um, how he started, because right now we are starting new processes and maybe we can find uh, some uh, um, practices that are good for also to innovate in new direction. Okay, what, what is uh, the future that we are talking uh, about? This is a glimpse of the future that we, image, uh, we have just imaged for, uh, as a showcase of what we could expect. This is the room from Van Gogh and is a bidimensional image and this is how we usually uh, see the art today, <coughs> sorry. And uh, what we, uh, in a way, wish is to create this unexpected experience. So in that moment, I'm using a, a Creative Commons material downloaded by, from Sketchfab of Martin Spray, and is, uh, uh, this uh, content is shared as a sharing knowledge. So um, you can use it and you can create your own uh, um, experience just interacting with people and sharing uh, their work. So this is a new era in a way. You don't have to create anything from scratch. Today we are very full of contents. Maybe today is better to understand how to remix it, how to create new value from something that has its own values. So this is just a, a quick uh, overview of the meaning of the of the camp. Now, the, I will leave you with this idea: if you, we can create a place where you can learn and play in uh, the same place, without the distinction between uh, what is a game and what is a, a culture, I think that we will hit uh, the the right uh, the right uh, place to be. So it's a new journey, it's a, um, a new experimentation to expand boundaries of uh, game factory, game development, and the cultural heritage promotion. And we also want to promote video game as a medium for culture. So as today we are doing a presentation that is in real time, and uh, for me, speaking in English, doing in real time this stuff is quite challenging, but I think is the good challenge that we are looking for. Okay, so um, now I will show you, after the, the water, I will show you how we um, think about to um, make the team and create uh, uh, the team in the most um, simple way. Because at 3 o'clock we will uh, go deeper and present all the desks and present us and all the guys and girls that today uh, will start the, the journey with you. So how we can uh, quickly understand which is the best um, part of your team. <coughs> During Game Jam usually creating uh, the team is a very difficult uh, aspect. So we start from uh, a very um, common uh, um, idea that is the triangle of game genre. I will show you what is this triangle that is the meaning also of our logo is uh, in a way expressing uh, which kind of video games you can create today. So when you start thinking about your idea, you have just to think about if you want to create something that is real, so a world that is in a way uh, similar and has uh, a good uh, 
um, representation and fidelity of the world, so the scale, the contents, the lighting, uh, you are making a realism um, product, or you can go on the other side where there is the meaning, meaning uh, if we want to um, understand what is the meaning in that context, the meaning is a word that is uh, thinking to be uh, credible and with a, a lot of familiar familiarity in the elements, but is uh, built around art style or need for uh, the original concept. So in that case, you can uh, recognize elements like uh, uh, in this case, Ori, which is uh, a very, um, a very, a very important uh, title that is coming, and uh, you will understand the rules of your world, and you can give uh, your shape of each element. Another example is Super Mario Bros. When you see the castle, the castle in Super Mario Bros. is very small and has uh, this long uh, uh, flag just because it's important that this meaning uh, of the castle is set in the uh, game design experience, but they don't create the castle with the real scale and the real uh, um, appearance. So, if you want uh, to create something absolutely new, then you have to go to abstraction, where the rules are very different. You can set your rules and create whatever you want, just keep in mind that your world has to be, in a way, um, think from the beginning as something that is credible inside their rules. So not invented, but in a way, um, it's important that you think about the rules that you want to say. And I want also to give a, a very quick uh, showcase of game titles that are inspired by art. So this connection between cultural heritage and game uh, industry is present uh, for, for a long time, but is not uh, in a way um, shown and public. Uh, Monument Valley is not working, but I know that you, all of you know Monument Valley. In this case, Monument Valley was a, I can use the, the image, was a game that the game design was uh, um, inspired by Asher, so you have multidimensional uh, possibilities uh, using uh, optical perception, and uh, this idea is the core idea of the game design of, Mo of Monument Valley. We have another title, Okami, that uh, steals from Okusai the art style, so all the game is uh, built around the vision and the appearance that Okusai is, uh, um, is an icon about uh, this kind of style. And then we have also some references that use art to create uh, marketing, in this case for uh, Eco, which is uh, a very incredible game that is a masterpiece in the game industry. Uh, the, the cover is inspired to the Kirko, and uh, also the game has this isolated place without elements and in a way is very, very inspired by this visual from, from the Kiriko. And the last example is Mondrian. Uh, I don't know if you know Thomas Was Alone. Thomas Was Alone is a game where you uh, possess three kinds of shapes with different colors and each one is able to do different uh, skills, and you have just to uh, let them to go through all the levels. So it's a, a collaborative shapes and colors uh, games. Okay, but we want to go further, and we want to also to understand that uh, in this case, as you see, when we talk about abstraction um, or meaning, is not a visual uh, uh, elements. In this case, we have uh, a real uh, uh, cathedral, Gothic cathe cathedral, made in uh, Minecraft and shared in Creative Commons. And as you see, the scale, the elements, they are all reals. So 
you can use uh, graphics that is not realistic, but the main idea is that uh, you are building a realistic world. So uh, elements like trees, grass, uh, fire, the scale, the proportion, is all moved to achieve a realistic uh, condition. And this is what I want to leave you. So don't think about the triangle of a game genre as uh, an art style uh, de decision, but is how you want to uh, build your world and uh, your stories inside. Okay, that's quite all. I will uh, um, close my, my window showing uh, the actual uh, scenarios. So if we want to see a realism uh, um, example right now that is connected with uh, cultural heritage, I think the best uh, um, example is uh, Assassin's Creed Origin that is coming out and talks about Egypt. They are very short, but I want that you see and listen because video games is audiovisual and interaction. So, very, I will stop. We can stop here because maybe there are young people, I don't know. Okay, just we close with him. He is the hero. So Assassin's Creed uh, is a very good example because right now to create the environment, they made a lot of research in historical and... Quando scavi sotto terra, archaeological uh, aspect. And uh, um, this big effort they do to create the familiarity with history and uh, to create the right context, historical context, in this year is the first time that um, a video game release a new game mode that is announced by Ubisoft to uh, experience the video game of Assassin's Creed without weapon, without, uh, um, um, uh, in a way, violence and without the plot, but you have just uh, some tools, uh, guided tools to understand how they built the pyramids, the story behind Cleopatra. So it's a good example of this trend that is coming and is coming with a big IP, so it's coming to the mainstream uh, market. The second example, as you saw, everything that we saw uh, was a, a very realistic representation of reality. This is an example of meaning. So is the uh, coming uh, Ori title. And as you see, we have elements that we know. We have a common uh, a familiarity with these elements. So we have trees, mushrooms, uh, and uh, creatures that in a way we can expect in reality but they are used uh, in a, an unexpected way and very 
uh, built around what they want to show and what is the story that they want to tell. Okay, we can. Okay, we can move uh, to abstract world. Uh, this is uh, the um, um, Thomas was uh, was alone. This is the mechanics, the game mechanics that are behind. You are this piece, uh, this free piece uh, of colors and shapes that are inspired by Mondrian, and you have to collaborate and uh, use them to uh, go through the game level. There is uh, an outside uh, uh, commentary made by uh, an actor, an, an English actor. So as you see, this, mo this world has its own uh, um, rules and its own uh, visual um, appealing. These three kinds of um, uh, genre are not, are the extreme position, but we can have also some in-between uh, um, production. In this case, I want to show you, and this is the last, what in my mind is uh, the benchmark of video games as a medium. In this case, this is Journey. Journey is a, a production made for PlayStation, and uh, they use uh, uh, a word that is in a way a meaning word, so we can understand that we are in a desert, we can understand that we are inside some strange architectures. We can s notice bridge and doors and elements that we have a familiar familiarity with, but uh, the uh, meaning of this experience is not connected with the real world. So in this case, this title is in between uh, uh, meaning and abstract. So they are using uh, elements as uh, archetypes and not as uh, real uh, elements of storytelling or contextualization in, uh, in reality. I think that journey is a good also example of what we want to achieve. So we don't want to create a video game, we want to create an experience. So with, with that, uh, I just close my presentation saying uh, that uh, if you are inspired by art, if you are powered by art and you create video games, it will be uh, noticeable that you made this effort and you collect this information. And also vice versa, you can also uh, think about how to involve people inside museum using the uh, history and the potentiality of the video game as a medium. I close saying that at three o'clock we will talk about the desk, so you have all the information about how to interact with us, and you have the Vade Mecum uh, documents where is uh, written everything about the, um, what I said and what you can do and when you have to do something. So thanks a lot and uh, have a good uh, developing. Okay, as you see there, there is a print of the triangle. So what I, we ask is uh, starting to talk with you and uh, uh, put your name on one part of the triangle. It's not a mandatory decision, so you can also change during the one hour that we have to create the team building. This process is made in Toronto too. So what will be uh, wonderful is to, uh, with the help of uh, the guys from Toronto, understand if there are simili similarities and maybe the possibilities to work internationally with uh, Canada. So you can take a post-it and put your name and just understand who are your companion for abstraction, for realism and meaning.
Thanks, Ray. Thanks.